Welcome back to another episode of Silent Pals Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review, and I'm here with my friend Tuli. Say hi, Tuli. Hello, everyone. And today we're going to be reviewing Blazing Saddles. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. In order to ruin a western town, a corrupt politician appoints a black sheriff who promptly becomes his most formal adversary. So let's begin with my first pro. First off, this is a Mel Brooks film and also has Richard Pryor as writers. You know it has some edgy jokes that make you see society in a different light. In total, there was five writers. One of them was the original script writer for the original idea, but after taking the script apart and rearranging things, we get the movie Blazing Saddles, a movie that rips the western genre apart in satire while punching some social issues in the face. Next point is the cast. We don't actually have Richard Pryor acting in this movie due to Mel Brooks not being able to get funding for the film if Richard was in the film due to his edgy stand-up routines at that time, but we have two actors that can be seen as mirror images of the comedian. We have Cleveland Little who plays Bart, the black sheriff, and Gene Wilder who plays Jim, the Waco kid. Both of these characters go through the movie and develop a friendship that needs to happen in order for the characters to deliver their jokes. It's almost like having two comedians on stage, one to set up the joke and the other one to deliver it, and when they're not on screen, the rest of the cast picks up the lines. Oh yeah, and Mel Brooks plays the governor, which was a hilarious role, but I wonder how much of that did he actually ablib, if at all, or what was left on the cutting room floor? Next is the story. It seems at first, if you remove the jokes, it could actually pass for a normal western movie, with a corrupt politician who wants to take over the town for his own gain so he appoints a sheriff that he thinks he can later easily remove and achieve his goal. So the typical bad guy plans don't go as planned and he loses at the end, you know, the same old thing. But when you add Mel Brooks' mind to the mix, you get something like a fever dream that has the main story but keeps wanting to stray away from it but in a sort of funny way. But also Mel says that he wrote the script out of anger towards the right corruption, racism, and Bible thumping bigotry and the only way he knows how is by making fun of them so it sort of works and on top of that it's an enjoyable movie next for the comedy it really shows that mel brooks and richard pryor were both writers in the movie but what most might not know is who wrote what mel said that the jews wrote the black jokes and richard wrote the jews jokes and then the other side approved them or not when i first saw the movie i really felt that the sheriff bart lines were written by richard pryor but then when i heard mel talk about who wrote what i was a bit shocked, but not due to the use of the n-word by Mel, but how well Mel wrote the character Bart while thinking of Richard as the character. And Richard wrote jokes for the white cast pretty well. But Mel did say that if this movie was remade in the present, they would have to take out the controversial word and thus there would be no movie. Back when it came out, he did get letters complaining about it, but most of them were from actual white people instead of the black community. Since Richard Pryor and Cleveland Little gave him consistent support to use the word he felt that the movie does have a bigger impact versus not having it. Now moving on to my cons. So back to the jokes. I can see the film not working nowadays due to the n-word but aside from that there are jokes that did not age well or totally seem to miss from my own point of view. For example there are some references to people that were popular back in the day there are no longer reference and thus doesn't carry over too well. Or some jokes were used too frequently and lost their impact impact as the movie went on. Next are some scenes that make the movie lose some pacing. I mean it's not that the film is long but some scenes tend to linger due to the joke trying to hit or reach too far and some of them not aging well. Which brings me to my last point, the Waco kid. It seems that he doesn't add much to the film. He is like a backseat driver to Bart's character. I would rather him be really intertwined with Bart's character and for them to be a real duo and not just for him to follow around Bart as his white bodyguard. It would have been interesting how it would have gone, but at the same time, I do imagine that it would have taken the light away from the main character, which was Bart. But I still really want to see how these two comedians would have basically made the story go if there was more to the Waco kit than just being there in the scenes. With that, I'm going to pass it on to my friend Tuli, see how he saw the movie and what grade he gave this movie. So a couple of points that Sal brought up, I do agree with in that although the movie is 
about an hour and 30 minutes long, which to me typically is a pretty decently length film for a story to be told and characters to be developed, yada yada yada. Yes, I did notice that a couple of the scenes did linger because of the setup for a joke. I think as funny as some of these jokes were, I do feel like maybe some of the scenes could have been trimmed down just a bit if they didn't either have those jokes or if, if they were able to shorten it somehow. But for me, it's not that big of a complaint really. Like I said, an hour and 30 minutes, even though some of the comedy aspects sort of led into the length of the movie, it wasn't like the movie was outrageously long. So I'm okay with that. As far as the vernacular that's used in this film, I will be honest, the first time I saw this film, it did surprise me because I wasn't expecting that sort of a language, especially at the onset of the film. So it did set the precedent early on. And it was just one of those things that I had to accept if I wanted to watch the film. But I don't want that to come across as me not realizing that such vernacular has history and is a very sensitive terminology. I don't want to necessarily dust that under the carpet. But in order for me to have watched the film, I needed to let those vernacular come to be. And it is one of those challenging mindset that you will have to have because if you're not able to, I suppose, differentiate between the sort of, as Sal mentioned, like satire sort of theme that they're using these language for, then it could be offensive and understandably so. So I want to at least acknowledge that. But once I was able to accept that within the medium of this film and how they were going about using these terminologies to play on certain characters in the film and theme that the film touches on, then I was able to settle down and embrace all the stuff that the film presented, you know, from the comedy to the characters to the story, which in of itself isn't a very complicated story. It's a pretty simple story where a group of people living in a town are getting targeted to leave their homes because it's in the way of a railroad being built. So, and it's just those people eventually being able to stand up for themselves with the leadership of Bart and his sidekick Jim. I think what I ultimately enjoyed the most about this film is at the end where they just broke the fourth wall and chaos just ensued, breaking into the various WB studio warehouses, you know, bled into the streets of Hollywood. I found that to be enjoyable despite how chaotic it got at that point of the film. But I did appreciate it because as far as a film doing something like that, this might have been, at least for me, you know, one of the earliest ones that did something so out there that although it seemed wild and now just out of place in many ways, the characters still remain true to who they were in these breaking the fourth wall setting. And I find it comedic too that they incorporated some of these things that broke the fourth wall back into their actual reality. For example, Jim eating popcorn at the end of the film back in that Western cowboy society to both Bart and Jim, you know, getting in a car before the credits roll. It was definitely weird the first time I saw it, but after everything sort of like settled, I enjoyed it. Again, nothing too sophisticated. The comedy is, I wouldn't say it's nonstop, but they are there and can be overwhelming. If I were to like maybe give a criticism about the film, it's not so much that, you know, some of the joke lingered and stuff, but it felt like there were too many jokes and, you know, I needed moments in the film where it was just calm and the situation would be tense and serious and nothing comedic about it. That would probably be my biggest criticism. And again, it's not too big of a criticism, but I feel like in terms of ensuring that an audience understands the gravity of the situation that these town folks are in, sometimes you might need to dial back just a little bit from this more heavily comedy theme that you have, just so that everything really pays off afterwards. I mean, the comedy is fine. Like I said, I didn't mind it too much, but that would probably be my complaint if they were able to like dial back the comedy just a little bit for maybe a couple of scenes. I love Bart's character scenes where he was tricking the town folks because of their stupidity. Jim with his fastest hands in the world as he claims. I thought the, the two leading characters there, even to the main villain who ended up dying at the entrance of the Chinese Grauman Theater, who also had of course memorable moments throughout the film as well, just like many of the other characters. The scene where he got pied when he saw chaos in the cafeteria area and he backed into what I believe was the, the restroom and somehow still got pied anyway. Things like that I loved about the film. They do have moments like that where they might catch you off guard, but for a movie that came out in the 70s, I felt like they did a good enough job to achieve perhaps the goals that they wanted this film to have. So my overall score is going to be a 7 out of 10. Again, simple story, easy to follow, comedy is all over the place. You do end up rooting for the good guys and, you know, rooting against the bad guys. And it's just, you know, one of those films where the good guys triumph in the end, but not without a lot of chaotic comedy happening along the way.
So, like Tuli said, this movie took it at the end too far, broke the fourth wall, and that's just Mel Brooks. I mean, it basically does add something. If we didn't have it, it would kind of fall short for a Mel Brooks movie, if you're familiar with his other movies. The one thing that I want to point out is it seems to me like the ending when he's breaking the fourth wall, it's almost like a Looney Tune cartoon. They're breaking the fourth wall, they're aware that they're in a movie, but then they actually step out of the frame to interact with you, especially when the movie goes from a Western to actually being filmed in the studio lot and going to other sound stages in the Warner Brothers lot. Especially the part where you see Bart do the skit where he goes to deliver the bomb to the bad guy. That whole interaction seems like he was playing the part of Bugs Bunny, you know, like outwitting the bad guy. So to me, this seems like it's a movie that does have some punches that it throws to as commentary, but at the same time, the jokes are playing to not too sophisticated jokes, but mostly like, hey, you know, like low end, but not to the point where it's just slapstick comedy all the time. I guess my grade is going to be the same as Thule, a 7 out of 10. Not one of the top Mel Brooks movies in my list, but it is up there. If you do see the punches that he throws at white corruption, racism, and other subjects, you know, you'll probably enjoy this movie. Also, we have Gene Wilder and Cleveland Little who do a wonderful job with their acting and the jokes that they deliver. So I guess that does it for this review of Blazing Saddles. Please join us next time where we're going to review The Godfather. I want you to rest well in a month from now this Hollywood Big Shot's gonna give you what you want. It's too late. They start shooting in a week. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.